It was the late 1980s, some of the darkest days of the AIDS epidemic. At the time, there was only one drug to treat the virus, AZT, and little was known about treating the opportunistic infections killing most AIDS patients. We were seeing friends die. I had a friend who was dying of what turned out to be AIDS. I lost several friends, both here and in New York. I was quite affected. I could see that my friends were all dying. People around you were dying, and they were your patients. So many people are dead, and I could have just as easily been one of them. And then one day I went to the airport and I collapsed on the ground. And I, uh, I couldn't get up off the ground. People were either sick, dead, or, you know, waiting to die. People were devastated. It was just a horrible time. Also devastating was a lack of swift or decisive action on the part of the federal government and the pharmaceutical industry. Failure to fund meaningful research and the glacially slow drug approval process meant many would die waiting for the drugs to combat AIDS. One day in Paul Rothman's living room, a group of people got together uh, and figured out that they needed to speed up research. While ACT UP picketed outside FDA headquarters, Dr. Paul Rothman, a physician with the Pacific Oaks Medical Group in Los Angeles, let an end run around the establishment. Paul had the ability and sort of an entrepreneurial spirit. He was very committed and great organizer, so he's a perfect person. Dr. Rothman, joined by friends, colleagues, and activists, including Martin Delaney, Jim Cordy, Matthew Rushton, William Zimmerman, Bob Homan, and many others, established Search Alliance science, education, and research to combat HIV, a small research initiative bringing together physicians and researchers willing to test worthy drugs and compounds that the mainstream medical establishment couldn't or wouldn't investigate. That was sort of the genesis of search, was bringing these physicians together, conducting this trial, and then not only seeing the need for that kind of research capability, but that there was already a core of individuals within the community who were capable and willing to do the work. We had to meet monthly initially because nobody knew what would help these people. And so we were eager to get together to try to exchange information to see if something might help. At that time, this was sort of the only organization in this city that really was dedicated to one, trying to find a cure. When the meetings first started, they didn't even know what the causative agent of HIV was, and it was still being called GRID, gay-related immune deficiency. Shortly after the group was formed, we heard reports that clarithromycin, an antibiotic available in Europe, might help against one of the opportunistic infections called MAC, and we put it into people. And lo and behold, it worked. Controversy would follow. It's a, sort of a misnomer to call compound Q an antiviral agent, but the, the effect was that it was a therapeutic for HIV at the time. The compound Q study, a secret trial coordinated by Martin Delaney, tested a smuggled Chinese pharmaceutical, trichosanthin, known for its cancer-fighting properties. Physicians and their patients in New York, San Francisco, and Los Angeles quietly took part. Mike Slattery compiled the data for Los Angeles. So it brought together a, you know, a, a group of physicians for the first time in sort of a guerrilla effort to look at an antiviral agent. It was a ragtag group at that time, but uh, there was nobody looking at other things that may help. Compound Q proved ineffective, and the trial was stopped due to toxicities. The clandestine nature of the study, no FDA approval had been sought, made national headlines but it also exposed deep flaws in the traditional drug approval process. I think there were important lessons. We got the FDA off, off their ass to look at things more critically. Search Alliance went on to conduct its own rigorous trials of numerous other experimental drugs, herbal remedies, and promising agents. Some proved effective, others not. There were quite a few studies that we wrote. Um, of course, they were on the cutting edge of HIV research. We weren't interested in the drug company or pharmaceutical company type trials. Panacin uh, was for Kaposi's sarcoma. 
didn't work. Too toxic. Oh, we tried aspirin, we tried low-dose interferon, we tried glutathione, human growth hormone. ACE Manin was a derivative of the aloe vera plant. We then did studies on tagamet, hyperbaric oxygen. Antibodies to alpha fetal protein produced in goats. Transfer of lymphocytes, shark cartilage. Isoprenazine and ribavirin were brought up from Mexico. And we tried IL-2 and gamma interferon. We tried allicin for cryptosporidia. One scientist walked through the front door and handed me an analog of curcumin. So it was kind of a confluence of events, finding agents that might have possibly worked from preliminary information, anecdotal evidence maybe in, uh, in people who had taken the meds, putting them into formal clinical trials and then trying to obtain results that would be relevant to the rest of the medical community. Because we, we found out many things that didn't work, so people didn't waste their money. And if we systematically went through the most likely things and even proved they didn't work, I think that was a tremendous benefit. All of these experiments, again, were done in individual doctor's office. It wasn't very long before we realized this model wasn't working as effectively as we wanted. It was a chaotic scene because we didn't have a big office staff. Uh, we had an executive director and one other person or two other people in the office and they would try to collate the data. There was an office, it was on Beverly Boulevard, I guess it was called the old Liberace building. And then Paul Rothman died. In 1993, Search suffered the devastating loss of its founder and leader, Paul Rothman. Sadly, other founding members and staff would later die as well. But the organization moved forward with new resolve and a determination to build on Dr. Rothman's dream. We obtained from the city of West Hollywood and the city of Los Angeles permission to use a part of their building on uh, San Vincente Boulevard. And we had 8,800 square feet. Uh, and we were able to consolidate clinical research in one center. Search became AIDS Research Alliance and the Ron Stone HIV Center would be its home for the next 14 years, a time of extraordinary growth and accomplishment. It also began to wrestle with its place in HIV science. It was the, the most dysfunctional, uh, passionate, and dedicated group of people I think I've ever met. And we gave hope to people. We obviously have never reached the cure, but um, our goal was to, to move it along and to help as many people stay alive as much as possible. Oh, I, I definitely think we're the legacy of Paul Rothman. He may not have imagined us as we are today, but I think we are the, the outcome of his passion, of his struggle, um, of the challenges that he faced 20 years ago. I think he would be really surprised. Just want to say that it was a very, very exciting time, and I, I didn't realize it at the time, but, uh, but it really made an impact. It made a difference. Every new drug that came to market prevented future deaths. Well, it changed my life absolutely for the better. They're all heroes, in my opinion.